classes. Um, I came to talk about intro into public safety, which is taught by Ms. Bostrom, and then intro into education, which is taught by Ms. Fitz. Um, firstly, um, for intro into public safety, um, it is a class where we cover units based on each job we can enter in public safety. This included regular tests, assignments, guided notes, and review days. We use a website called ICEV to access notes and our assignments. We learn about five sections of public safety, which include fire and emergency services, legal services, security and protection services, corrections, and law enforcement. Our first semester, we covered law enforcement, fire and emergency, and half of our corrections unit. Um, so far, we have also covered multiple paths into these careers and also the history and growth in these areas. Um, addition to our regular class, we've had multiple speakers and field trips, and I find this so beneficial to not only keeping us excited for class, but also showing us the areas that we are interested in entering. Personally, I enjoyed looking into dispatch, and I considered this after a field trip to the police station. Me and my classmates all actively enjoy the information, and I have personally noticed many great conversations throughout our classroom. I also wanted to thank Ms. Bostrom for being so understanding and so sweet to our class in her first year of teaching. Um, in conclusion, I cannot speak for all my classmates, but I have gained a lot from intro into public safety. Um, and then for intro into education, it was very similar. We had different units, and so we covered a lot of history. Um, and we also went on a lot of field trips, and I found it so fun to go hang out with all the little kids. <laughs> um, overall, I gained a lot from both of the classes, um, and I want to thank the Huron School for offering classes like that for me and my classmates. Thank you. Any questions for Michaela before she... Does anybody have any questions? I don't have any questions. I'm just, I'm so glad that you guys have had this opportunity. Mrs. Bostrom has a tremendous amount of experience, uh, a lot of knowledge there. I'm excited that she gets to share that with you. And you guys getting introduced to this stuff early on is, um, you know, it, it encourages you guys to continue to pursue something that maybe you're interested in. It's hard to know sometimes what you want to do when you get big and you grow up and you get out of high school and out of mom's house. So I'm so excited for you guys and I love your enthusiasm. So thank you for sharing with us tonight. Thank you so much. We had the opportunity for the state to come in um, late last fall and take some pictures um, to use for their publications and they shared with us. So I just want to share with you um, some of the pictures that were taken whoops, um, for some of our CT programs. Any questions for myself? Right. Thank you for your report. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next report to the board, we have Linda Peets, our Director of Curriculum. Good evening, mine tonight is just a quick social studies adoption. Right now we're going through um, looking at our social studies curriculum. It starts out in the summer and looking at the different um, social studies samples, I begin with that. The building principals begin um, creating their committees and determining who's going to be on their committees. At the same time, they start giving me parent names and letters that I can start sending to individual parents that can be part of our committees when we have our vendors actually come in. Um, throughout this time, I've been meeting with the different committees and letting them know how the process is going, the different um, social studies curriculum samples that can come in. Um, thank goodness for our um, mailman, Mike, who helps me with all of the different samples that come in, and we have to distribute them out to our buildings. Um, he's fabulous with helping me get those out into the buildings. Um, at the same time, I create a rubric that can be used as a matrix for them to evaluate, and it goes out into the buildings. This is also a perfect time for me to let the public know as part of our policy. Any community member or parent that wants to go out and look at all the various samples that come in, those are out in the buildings right now that they can fill out those matrix. 
and I will collect those by the end of January and I score all of those and that helps determine the actual vendors that come in and present. And in January, or excuse me, February, the vendors that score the highest come in and present to the committee members. And then we rescore and use those and determine which ones align best to the standards and fit with the um, with our population and the priority standards that align with what we determine works best for us as well as going along with the standards. And then I come and present to the board again and get board approval before we make our final purchases. And so just to give you a timeline of where we're at, those samples are now all out in the buildings and um, the matrix are out there. So anyone can come in and the committees and, and all of the different, especially in the elementaries where all the teachers work with it. Everybody has an opportunity, not just the committee, to be able to look at the samples and score them and have an opportunity to look through those. And then um, by February, that's when the vendors will come in and present. Any questions for me on that? No? I guess I have one question. The social studies standards, they've been kind of hot in the news in the past couple of years. Um, have you had any difficulty in securing vendors that would al that would align with with the standards that came out is is the material is the number of vendors that say hey we we can hit those standards is, is it the same as as it has been in the past or is it there's less that's a great question um because especially with the middle school and high school did not change nearly as drastically as the elementary and i had um more difficulty finding elementary um, curriculum that were there. Um, the other piece um, that you know we follow whatever the state standards will be. The other piece that we're following um, with what has been told is then next year they're also going. They're looking four pieces that will supplement and so whatever we choose we'll align our priority standards and then we'll use what the state finds out there as supplementary pieces um, to enhance the pieces that are not there for the what we find vendors to teach but we also have to always remember um, the priority standards that we choose have to um, align with what the state standards that have chosen and what we feel we can guarantee that we can, you know, meet with our children and then the other standards are the ones that we will continue to meet with what the state aligns to. So just like just like we've always done. So but it is more difficult. There are a lot of companies who didn't even put out especially the elementary curriculum anymore. Hmm. So yeah, as you talk through that, that was going to be my second question, is if you could get additional curriculum or a, a supplemental part, but it sounds like that might be the pathway that we could possibly end up going down. So, Interesting. So, all right. Any other comments or questions? All right, thank you for your report. Yep, thank you. All right, moving into our next report to the board, we have our <coughs> land report, and our land representative this year... Mr. Van Burkham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This won't be a real long report. The uh, legislative session begins tomorrow uh, with the state of the state address. I believe it's at 1 p.m. But one thing I've noticed when, as I peruse through the uh, bills is there's already uh, quite a lot of bills already filed. Uh, a lot of them are departmental bills, but there are individual legislators that have already submitted resi or submitted resolutions there, but uh, there were about four pieces that caught my attention that I wanted to bring to everyone else's attention. I'm going to start with one Senate bill. It's Senate Bill 34. It has to do with uh, uh, school sentinels and resource officers. If this, uh, this thing becomes law as it is, uh, Reading in there, it uh, requires if there's an exterior door unlocked during regular school hours when students are present, it must be monitored 
and controlled by a school district employee who is physically present. If it's locked during regular school hours, it can be monitored by video surveillance. Uh, biggest part is, is uh, board of each district must ensure that a school resource officer or a local sentinel is immediately available at each school operated by the district during regular hours. And that could be a huge, huge thing for every district. You know, us, how many buildings do we have that if this becomes law as it is, and it goes through the training and it does uh, provide monies so we're not on the hook for the uh, full expense if this thing becomes law as it as it is. Uh, this is being introduced by Senator Hoffman, but it's kind of a big deal because I, if I remember right, when they first passed the uh, Sentinel law, there was only one district that even took advantage of it, if I recall correctly. But and it also. Uh, it repeals portions of the law where uh, if a school district did enact a sentinel program before it could be referred to a public vote if people gathered signatures. Uh, that's all being wiped out so it could not be referred to a public vote. Uh, I'll keep watching that and see where it goes. Uh, I, I suppose, you know, Senator Hoffman has his reasons for submitting it, but uh, uh, going over to a couple of House bills that caught my attention. Uh, House Bill 1002 would require all juniors to take the ACT exam. And uh, it would uh, be funded by Department of Ed. They would uh, reimburse school districts for our costs, so we're not on the hook for the cost of that. Uh, there's a couple of exemptions. Superintendent may exempt a student from taking it if if it's not part of their IEP or other special circumstances, which doesn't spell out special circumstances. Uh, House Bill 1042 had to do with school lunches. We've heard a lot in the news about school lunches and charging people. As I read through this, it says a district could not charge somebody for a meal if they would qualify for uh, free and reduced lunches. I think this is more of an attempt to get districts to get people to fill out those forms. Uh, and then House Bill 1048 is a bill to uh, try and clean up the target teacher salary. A lot of districts that uh, haven't reached that goal and they're gonna be giving, if I read this right, like a four year timeline to take all past increases and future ones and, and get there. I mean, it doesn't really affect our district because we've thrown everything we had at salaries, but these districts that didn't get there, they could be in a world of hurt if this thing uh, becomes law as it's currently written. This is, a, this is a departmental bill coming out of the Department of Education. Uh, with that, unless there's any questions or comments, that's all I have for tonight. It's already starting out to be an interesting session. There's barely any bills filed, but my goodness. Anybody have any questions for Tim or comments? All right, Tim, thank you for your report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, next we will move to our business manager's, business manager's report, Mr. Christofferson. <laughs> Okay, I just have one item tonight, an update on the general fund budget. We are one half of the way through the budget already. So the district has collected $12,341,000 or 46% of the budgeted revenue. At this time last year, we had 11235000 or 45%. <clears throat> We've expended $11,089,000 or 41% of the budget. Last year at this time, we had spent $10,324,000 or 42% of that budget. <clears throat> That's all I have for my written report. I didn't have any construction updates for you this month. I'm told that the tennis court's 100% complete. The last two roof panels came in and were installed. So I think we're 100% done. All right, anybody have any questions for Mr. Christofferson? Okay, thank you for your report. Our last report to the board tonight will be our superintendent's report, Dr. Steinhoff. Thank you again, Chairman Bischoff. I just have two items this evening. The second one's a bit longer than the first one, but 
The first one is today's weather reminds us that we are in the season of winter. The instructional leadership team is working to finalize our plan to offer e-learning to cover one or two snow days if I choose to cancel school due to poor winter weather the rest of the semester. So the maximum would be no more than two e-learning days. Uh, the first makeup day for this school year will be on Friday, May 17th. Um, we believe that that's our best interest to just finish out the week and have the, a snow day on Friday if, if we have one. Uh, but subsequent snow days may be eligible for e-learning. My plan is I hope to bring you um, this e-learning plan for your review and approval at the January 22nd Board of Education meeting. And what that would do is give us up to one or two days of e-learning possibilities to make up um, if we have snow days. So uh, be prepared for that for the next school board meeting. Uh, the second thing is I have selected an interim principal, Mr. James Cutshaw, to be an administrator on duty at the Buchanan K-1 Center for the remainder of the 23-24 school year. The Buchanan K-1 principal search will be conducted by Dakota Ed Consulting, uh, and that uh, permanent uh, principal will start on, in the fall of 2024. But in terms of a bio, Mr. Cutshaw is in his 30th year of education. Jim and his wife Debbie moved to Huron in 2007 with their three children. His wife Debbie is an RN at HRMC. His eldest son Jamie teaches computer programming at the Huron Middle School. Jordan is his daughter who is a junior at SDSU and studying human biology and plans to attend medical school after graduation. Jim and Debbie's youngest son Cameron is a senior at Huron High School. Cameron is in, involved in cross country, speech and debate, band, choir and theater and plans to attend SDSU next fall to study mechanical engineering. Mr. Cutshaw grew up in the Pier area and graduated from TF Riggs. He has earned degrees from, the, from Northern State University, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and the University of South Dakota. Mr. Cutshaw has had several educational roles, including teaching in Lincoln, Nebraska, in Sioux Falls, and in Huron. Additionally, he earned a youth ministry certification from Wartburg Seminary in Dubuque, Iowa, and served as a youth minister at a Lutheran church in Ankeny, Iowa. After marriage, they moved to Sioux Falls, where he taught middle school, earned a specialist degree from USD, and worked as a school improvement specialist for one of the former South Dakota ESA units. He served as a principal and superintendent of the Woolsey Westington School for 12 years, uh, and the principal and technology coordinator for Stanley County for three years. He was named the Ivan Dixon Administrator of the Year in 2022. For the past year and a half, Mr. Cutshaw taught sixth grade English at the Huron Middle School, and he will continue coaching uh, the middle school oral interpretation as he fills out his role this spring as interim principal. So we welcome him aboard, and I'm thankful that uh, he has accepted that and uh, moved there. He started on January 3rd. And this concludes my report. However, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? All right, thank you for your report. We have no items of old business tonight, so we'll move right into new business. Item A of new business is our business manager contract approval for the 2024-2025 school year and 2025-2026 school year. Uh, it is past practice that we have always extended extended our contracts of our business manager and superintendent at this meeting, so that's what this is. Uh, the actual dollar amount will be filled out once we, once we know, or the renewed dollar amount will be, will be updated once we know what, uh, what the budget's gonna look like after session's up. So I would entertain a motion to approve the business manager contract for 2024-2025 and 2025-2026. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Is there any discussion? I guess I would just like to say a th thank you to Kelly for, for your hard work, and we like keeping you around here. So Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Any other comments or discussion? Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We, the business manager contract is approved. Our next item of new business is the superintendent contract approval for the 2024-2025 school year and the 2025-2026 school year. So I would entertain a motion to approve the superintendent contract. So moved. 
Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the superintendent contract. Is there any discussion? I would just say that we did complete our superintendent evaluation at our last meeting. We did a, a 360 evaluation with all the administrators um, below him and, and the board and did, did that at our last meeting and had he good passed. He passed, yes. So um, again, we, we appreciate you, Dr. Steinoff, and having you around here. And, Appreciate uh, you know moving moving to Huron and your family becoming a part of the community and and all the work that you do. So, thank you. I'm thankful to be in Huron and I'm thankful to be your superintendent. Mm -hmm. Any other any other discussion on on this item? Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor of approving the superintendent contract for 2024-2025 and 2025-2026, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Um, item C of new business is our governing board annual review questionnaire. This is for the tax exempt bond post issuance compliance general. And Mr. Christopherson, you have some comments on this? <clears throat> this is our, your, not, this is your yearly review of the uh, questionnaire for to make sure that we're in compliance with all, everything that's required of us after you borrow money with a bond. So if you have any tax exempt bonds, a school has to continue to be in compliance with everything while those bonds are outstanding. So we still have the uh, elementary bonds outstanding and we still have capital outlay certificates outstanding. So that is why we do these questionnaires each year. They there's nothing new in them, and none of the answers have changed. All right. So I would entertain a motion to approve the Governing Board Annual Review Questionnaire, and this is for the tax-exempt bond. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve. Is there any discussion? Something we do every year at this yeah. time. Thanks, Kelly, for always keeping us in compliance. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item D of new business is our governing board annual review questionnaire, and this is for the tax advantage bond post issuance compliance general. And Mr. Christophers, do you have, do you have any comments on this one other than <coughs> saying it's the same as the other? It's the same again this year, and this should be the... <clears throat> Unless something new happens, this should be the last year for that questionnaire. The tax advantaged bonds were the second half of the elementary bond refinancing. And that's, recall that we did that in 2017 and in 2021 we advanced, refunded those bonds. That's all coming to a head in February of 2024 where all that money comes out of escrow and pays off the 2013 bonds with the, uh, the new bonds. I All guess right. what I meant to say is we won't have them in escrow anymore, but we will still have two bond issues instead of three. One will be tax advantaged and one will not. So I guess we're stuck with the two questionnaires for a while. All right. Mm. I'd be willing to wager that we couldn't do that again. <laughs> the way the interest rates have gone, nope. we wouldn't be able to refinance anything so we saved millions of dollars without those two documents all right is there any questions or discussion thanks again kelly we can't do this without you so much appreciated all right seeing no further discussion we'll vote all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries that is approved Moving into item E of new business, we have policy GCBD-2, professional staff leave absences, sick leave for administrators. And this is up for an introduction, and I would turn it over to Dr. Steinhoff for comments on this. Uh, this policy um, actually should have been updated last year when we uh, changed the uh, sick leave, so when employees leave the district then they're paid those sick leave days are paid out and it previously was 
based on a dollar amount of sixty dollars, and we changed that to be half of a day of a sub pay, and we forgot about changing the administrator policy, and so this is something that we technically should have had last year, um, but forgot about it, mm -hmm. and so it was brought to our attention, and this mirrors what we changed last year from the sixty to the point five on a sub day pay rate for people that that leave the district and meet the requirements of this, that's how there's, their sick leave would be paid out. All right, thank you, Dr. Steinhoff. Does anybody have any questions or comments? This is an introduction, so it will be on the next meeting agenda for a first reading, and the following meeting, it will be up for a second reading. So we will see it a few more times. All right, seeing no comments, we will move on. Item F of new business is our calendar school start date for the 2024-2025 school year. We made changes to our calendar policy and we now have a chance to look at the first day of school for the coming school years and see what we would like that start date to be. So I turn it over to Dr. Steinhoff for, for some comments on school start date. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, again. Um, if, if you think back to uh, last year or two years ago, already it was, we did we chose to do two years worth of calendars, and so when we created the calendar plan for next year, I guess it was last year we did this, the uh, the start date mirrored what the start date was of the school year this year, which was Thursday. It ended up being Thursday, August fifteenth. What we didn't talk about back in the time when we were meeting was that we had the rollback year and so it ended up that this is earlier than what it would have been last year. I did survey the uh, large school superintendents and found that uh, many of them are starting on, on dates that are uh, past the August 15th um, and they, you know, they range, the average start date we believe in the state of South Dakota next year is going to be, or the most common date is going to be the 19th, Monday uh, the 19th. But as we look at the calendar that's in front of us, um, if you were to ask me for my opinion on changing the date, and if you're, if you're deciding that you as a board want to change the date, of course, I'll accept and, and work with the calendar committee on whatever date you pick. Um, you could choose to not change it, and then we would still be starting on Thursday, August 15th. But if you do uh, decide that you want to change it, uh, my recommendation would be changing it to Tuesday, August 20th. And that would mean that we would have three other days that we need to make up within the calendar, but it would push our start date back a little bit. We'd be in line with many of the other large schools. It would still allow us to have the... Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for kindergarten screening, the four days that it takes for kindergarten screening. And kindergarten could start then the following Monday and have three days of school and three days of busing prior to us taking the break for the state fair. Um, and I, my, what I would do is bring this to the calendar committee, whatever you choose, and my ask from the calendar committee is to not start all over, but to simply figure out how we add days into the current calendar based on whatever the start date you have so I anticipate minimal changes to this, um, just adding dates in if you choose to uh, have the start date be different than what it is listed here. And I guess the final thing is I would ask, please don't go any earlier than, than August 15th. I, I think Mr. Bishop is thinking about you know trying to get us started on the 14th of. You said September 14th? <laughs> the 12th, the 12th of August you were thinking. <laughs> All right, so past practice, we've always had a couple meetings where we talked about the start date. I don't anticipate that we would actually approve the date tonight, just kind of talk about it, give the community a chance to weigh in to us board members and and we can go forward from there. I, I personally like the 20th better than the, than the 15th. I feel like the, the school year this year just started a little too soon and I've had plenty of people comment to me the same that, boy, this year started early and got going early so I guess my opinion was yeah it'd be it'd be nice to move it back into that next week but it's up to the five of us to come to a consensus and so like I said I think we should 
officially vote on it at the next meeting, but I like I like superintendent's recommendation of the 20th, but everybody else? Yeah, that makes sense to me, the 20th. I would prefer it to be after Labor Day, but being in line with the rest of the big schools is, I guess, the second best. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? If not, like I said, I think we should approve it. We'll approve it at our next meeting and give the community a chance to, to weigh in on this. All right, moving on, we have one item left tonight and that is executive session under South Dakota Codified Law 1-25-2, subsection three, consulting with legal counsel or reviewing communications from legal counseling Council about proposed or pending litigation or contractual matters, and also under subsection four, which is preparing for contract negotiations or negotiating with employees or employee representatives. So we have two separate executive sessions, and there will be no action after executive session. So I would entertain a motion to go into executive session for those two things. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to go into executive session. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we will vote. All those in favor of entering executive session, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We will take a brief recess as we get ready for executive session.